Do paleontologists talk about this, like talk about how the impact affected the earth and like if there were more than one? I know it was like the Chicxulub impact in the Yucatan was the one that took out the dinosaurs. Do people think that there could have been more than one impact? And where can you find the most dinosaur bones oh well okay uh so the sorry that was like five questions the, yeah so so actually there's i just saw I, I can't remember the name of the paper um but somebody just did some work oh it was jim kirkland uh who is a fabulous american paleontologist who uh was involved in like the discovery of uh a bunch of notable species but he uh he just did a paper on uh, an impact in, I think, Africa at the end of the Jurassic. So it turns out that maybe these, like this, the Cretaceous period, which is like this, this the, the heyday of dinosaurs, this like the longest mm-hmm. stable period in recent Earth history. Yeah, Kirkland just did, uh, just shared this paper on, uh, yeah, a, 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 apparently another meteor impact in South Africa that may have ended the- The Moral age, Quang? Yeah, the, the age of Brontosaurus and Stegosaurus. So it may be that that um, the whole age of dinosaurs was kind of, I mean, you know, the, the Permian extinction also had, um, you know, was mostly about volcanic eruptions and-, and What extinction? The end Permian, which is right before the Triassic, which is the, the period that killed the- the regime of terrestrial reptiles and the whole like ocean ecosystem that that basically uh, cleared the slate and made room for dinosaurs to take over, and this the end Permian extinction is the biggest in the history of what? the planet. It's like ninety six percent of all life on Earth. Make that big again, Steve. That the image. That's not it. That one. So where where is that here? That's um, not on this oh, chart. So it's not on but this. I mean, if you look, it's uh, about two hundred and fifty two million years ago that there was a. Uh, okay, so we're only at this one only yeah. goes to one hundred fifty. Actually, million. if you if you there's a Netflix documentary, Life on Our Planet, that goes into some of the the end Permian stuff in detail. That you you get just like nothing. Like there's there's almost nothing left over. Um, and we bounced back from that. And that's just, it's funny because like there are, um, there's, they say five mass extinctions and we're living through the sixth, but that's based on a kind of what, I, you know, like I consider kind of an arbitrary marker. And there are actually in the kind of recent fossil record, there are like 18 enormous extinctions, not like 18. Yeah. There aren't, they're not all mass extinctions as far as like, you know, Pluto, like some people don't consider Pluto a planet, but you know, it's like that kind of a, right. you know, an, a, a boundary, yeah. but there are a lot more major extinction episodes in the history of the planet than most people realize. And, uh, and that only goes over the last few hundred million years. And if you go back even further to, even more, you know, before the advent of multicellular, like complex life, yeah. then there were ma- major dieouts like the great oxygenation event 2.2 billion years ago. 2.2 billion. Yeah. So like that's when uh, cyanobacteria, like blue green algae, figured out how to photosynthesize. And then over a couple hundred million years, flooded the atmosphere with oxygen. And at the time there were no oxygen friendly microbes on the whole surface of the planet. And so it killed off most of life on the planet back when there was only bacteria. And so then like, uh, like, uh, it's so funny because, you know, uh, I was just hearing you, your conversation with the snake brothers and they were talking about, you know, like there's this thing of, you know, like disaster events and people hiding underground. And like, it's so like, there's this constant theme in extinction events where, uh, that's what happened at the end Permian. That's what happened at the end Cretaceous. And that's what happened back at the great oxygenation event was like, there were these, these horror story moments where the, you know, like the planet is just being, uh, pummeled by acid rain and like this, you know, plants aren't growing and, uh, you get, yeah, you can see a ton of spikes on this, the Wikipedia, like you can see the, the mass extinctions stick out, but then there's like a whole sort of. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on wow. and, uh, and some of these are, are possibly due to kind 250. Of, what's, which one is that? That's uh, 250 the, is the Permian per Permian. Yeah. Permian. That's the, that's the big boy wow. right there. 
Uh, but and yeah, what do you think that that was? You said that was volcanoes. Yeah, there was like a methane bloom uh, that that made the atmosphere toxic, and and the whole planet was just on fire. It's it was nasty. Um, but yeah, so the point is that like the animals that survive through these kinds of events are burrowing animals, and so the, even back in the uh, the great oxygenation event in the Precambrian, which isn't on this chart. Right. Um, <clears throat> You've got a Cambrian was 500 million years ago. Yeah, yeah. So there's that little uh, right at the beginning of this chart is the origin of complex multicellular life with like uh, eyes and okay. you know uh, external carapaces and you know they were hunt like modern predator prey dynamics. Okay, come out around around this time. You know the world stops being just wow. jellyfish and corals, but yeah. So there's there's this whole uh, repeating motif in the history of life of things getting so bad that the only way that people or the only way that the life on the planet can survive is by either adapting to poisonous atmospheric conditions or by burrowing underground and waiting it out. And so like the, your own, uh, gut biome is basically the, uh, the billionaire bunker dwellers of two billion years ago that decided they were going to wait it out underground, and they're they're still down there waiting it out. Uh, they're still like the anaerobic bacteria are no longer they no longer conquer the surface of the planet, but they're they're inside all of the little places that they can still hack it out without being poisoned by oxygen. Right. What is the oldest thing that you found in your digging? Um, I never dug older than the Triassic. Um, okay. Oh, actually, no, that's not true. Because I, because for a while I grew up in Kansas City, and Kansas City is uh, Ordovician, so it's it's uh, it's pre Mesozoic. It's like I think like 350, 400 million years ago. Somebody's gonna call me on this because this is not my this is not my area, uh, but this is when the like r ancient relatives of starfish, uh, the crinoids, were like stalked. They look like. Uh, sea lilies or something like they they have a like a long kind of uh armored stock and then the sea star part of it is like up in the water column filter feeding oh, really? and so they're all over the midwest you you go to a road cut in the midwest and you can pull out these gorgeous crinoid specimens and those were all down by the the missouri river bluffs by my house so that's probably the oldest thing but the oldest thing that i i actively dug in wyoming was uh Triassic. Uh, it's it's uh, there. The Wyoming was part of a Triassic seaway at the time, and so you have ancient squid relatives called belemnites that have these armored cones in the core of their body, like like if you're if you've got a parrot and it's eating cuttlefish bone. You know, it's kind of like that, but it was like con cone shaped. Yeah, there you go. So these guys are all over certain parts of Wyoming and and oh, wow. the Rocky Mountain areas. And they're really interesting, gorgeous. Like there's there's these fossil deposits where it's just millions and millions of squid butts, as Bakker used to say. <laughs> and yeah, you just walk around and they're everywhere. It looks like it looks like uh, spent bullet casings all over the ground. That's wild, man. 